Yeah, there's a little added intensity. We understand that um, it's a pretty pivotal game in our season. They're the highest ranked opponent we've had uh, all year. And uh, it kind of is a deciding factor of how the season's going to go. Michael, can you wear green this week? <laughs> um, you know, honestly, I don't think I have any green in my wardrobe, so I haven't had to worry about that. But uh, this isn't the team of North rivalry, so it's a good game and it's it's an important game, but it's it's not the team up north rivalry. Can you say their name? Guys this week? Michigan State? Yeah. yeah, it's Michigan State. <laughs> I, you, we know what that rivalry is. And we know this is a huge game for many reasons. They beat you last year. You're tied for first place, all that stuff. Just like the vibe, the feeling. I mean, I know you want to win both those kinds of games very badly. But is like the motivation, the, the intensity, is it similar at all? Is there something that's very different about it when it's a rivalry versus a big game for other reasons? Uh, this game isn't important because of last year. This game is important because um, we still have a lot of postseason dreams, and uh, beating Michigan State is is vital on that path. Uh, so I think that's why this game is important. There's a different feel when you when you go play the team up north, just because it's a rivalry. It's been a rivalry for so long. So, um, but when you just go into a big game, it's just a whole nother. Uh, it's a different kind of importance of winning that game. I don't know really how to describe it or what makes it different, but it's a different. It's a different feeling. Talking about the importance of this year's game for all the crazy success you guys have had over the last three years, does it kind of feel like you guys are lacking a, a truly signature win? Urban was in there talking about how it's a chance to gain some national respect. Um, what, what, is, what would a win mean for Ohio State Saturday? Uh, yeah, I, I guess you could call it a signature win. Um, I think people have all, like for the past three years, have said we've just beaten up on teams that aren't good or whatever they say, and uh, that when it comes down to it, we can't win a big game. But um, I think if you look back, we've had plenty of big games that we've won. Uh, and I just kind of think that's the hype around Ohio State is that we don't win big games. But um, it's important to win this game because they're a great opponent. And uh, like I said, if you want postseason dreams, you got to keep winning. There's a lot, of talk, a lot of talk about their defense through the years. But offensively, you look at their numbers this year, they're off the charts. What, mm -hmm. what uh, jumps out at you? about uh, the step that they've taken this year offense? They seem a lot more um, a lot more consistent with run and pass. I think last year they were a lot better at running the ball. Um, this year I think they're averaging about 250 yards per game each, like with run and pass. So uh, they're a lot more consistent. They're a lot more even. Uh, I think it's very important for us to shut down the run so they have to pass it because I think our secondary uh, is a lot better than they were last year, a lot more experienced. Does Connor Cook look the same as the guy you got ready for? Last season, or does he seem any different as a quarterback? Going into the game last year, uh, Connor Cook didn't really put anything exceptional on film. Uh, and then when he played us, he, he had a really good game, and I think he's kept um, improving since then. Uh, so I'd say he's a much better quarterback than when I watched him on film last year. Uh, but every quarterback you have to you have to prepare for. Um, I think he's a good pro-style quarterback. you got to get pressure on him, uh, make him make bad decisions. And uh, I think our secondary and linebackers can take the ball away. In what areas has he made the biggest strides? He's more consistent throwing the ball. I just I think he can hit his receivers a lot better. I think he's more comfortable in the pocket. I think he trusts his old line better. Um, so he's just overall he's just became a better quarter. He's as you get older you just get better at your trade and I think that's what he's done. The environment you're going into, do you hope, think that two weeks ago having a got the game out that you did against Penn State? Um, in that whiteout, can that be beneficial? I mean, you've you've seen a lot as a senior, but there were a lot of young guys that maybe that was the first grinded out game they were in. Uh, you, do you think it can help this week? Yeah, I think it's especially good for uh, JT Barrett because um, you're not really going to find an away game as loud as Penn State. That's just that's a fact. Penn State's the loudest away game we're going to play, depend no matter like where you go. Uh, so it was a hostile environment. Guys now have experienced a hostile environment, and I don't think. A lot of people outside of football understand how important it is um, to experience that kind of stuff. So uh, I think this will be a fun away game. I think their stadium will be loud and crazy, but um, I think guys will be ready for it. And Michael, the fact that Connor Cook kind of had his coming out party against you guys, can you exercise some demons by performing well against him this week? Uh, it's not about, I don't think it would be exercising demons. I think guys. If you play well in this game, you're going to be noticed. Um, this is obviously a really big game. Uh, ESPN's going to be there, all that stuff. So you're on 
the national stage like you are most uh, Ohio State games, but this one, the spotlight's really on this game. Um, so, like I said, it's not about last year. It's not about the year before. It's all about uh, what this win would mean for this season. Why do you have to put last year in the rearview mirror so much? Why can't you use that as motivation this week? Because it's because it's over. If you start worrying about what they did last year, you're going to go into that game trying to do something different than what we've been doing all year. If we do what we've done all year, our defense has gotten better and better. Our offense has gotten better and better. Um, if we start doing a bunch of different stuff just because of what they did last year, uh, I think I think that'll really sidetrack us and kind of get away from the the main focus. You guys are really underdogs, but you are in this game. How does that sit well with this team? Uh, I think we like it. This team is interesting to me because I think um, for the first time since I've been here, except maybe my sophomore year, guys have really relished uh, being just looked at as overrated or whatever it is. Um, we're, we're here to prove something. We're here to show that you know we're a complete team and that, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter what people rank us, whether they say we're going to blow a team out or they say we're going to be in a dogfight. We're going to go out there and we're going to play the same way and we're going we're gonna to make people earn it. You mentioned the atmosphere at Penn State, <clears throat> but the the fact that you guys were up by 17, they came back, they had the momentum, you took them, you, you know, and you took care of that in overtime. Can that also be helpful if you get in a, a you know difficult situation on the field in this game? Yeah, I think I think the Penn State game was a huge growing experience for the team because, like you said, they had all the momentum after uh, tying it up with us, and we were still able to to um, put our foot in the ground and, and come away with a win. So knowing that we have that kind of that kind of uh, mentality and that we can rally around each other is, is pretty comforting as an older guy because you don't usually see younger guys really buying in to, oh, this game is actually super important because usually younger guys might be like, well, I've got two, three more seasons. Um, but I really don't have any worries when it comes to if things get hard, our guys going to respond because you saw it against Penn State. Um, guys are ready to go, and they're always going to be ready to go. Mike, I know he's an offensive coach, but Tim Hinton said that Mark D'Antonio infuses his program with sort of a chip on the shoulder attitude. Do you see that on the field when you play this team, and in, and in what way? Yeah, they're gritty. They uh, they're tough. They play till the whistle and a little bit after. Um, they're gonna go for you. They're not gonna ease up or anything. They go for four quarters. Uh, it's a it's really a fun game to play just because you know I know I'm gonna be out there for seventy something plays, and every single play is gonna be just a war. Um, and I think that's I don't know that's why I like I like playing football. It's not just to win football games. It's to be in a war with other guys and show that I'm better. You, you mentioned that, as Lori mentioned, that they're playing with a chip on their shoulder. You guys don't get to play with a chip on your shoulder most weeks, but you do this week. What's that mentality like where you get to go into a game with something to prove with a chip on your shoulder? Uh, I mean, it's fun. There's a lot more energy going around, uh, but it's also extremely important to make sure people don't get too hyped up or don't get like I, I said earlier, just you have to play the way we've been playing. If you start going out there and trying to change it up because you got a chip on your shoulder, you're going to be in for a heck of a game. But if we go out there and we just do what we've been doing, uh, I think that we can we can do pretty well. Do you guys, do you guys have a feeling that like you have to go and earn some respect back on, on a national level? Yeah. Uh, I mean, this year with that loss to Virginia Tech, we got we lost a lot of respect. Uh, but I mean, we're not. It's not about making sure everybody loves us in the country or respects us in the country. It's about winning games and making sure that uh, we have a chance to go where we want to go in the postseason. So this game is is just important for that because it's the next game, um, and we have to win. And they're a good opponent. What do you know about the defensive line now that maybe you didn't know back in August? Um, I know that guys are really together. I think uh, this is the closest we've been as a defensive line unit. Um, and that, it's weird, but that makes you play a lot harder. It makes you a lot more accountable. So when you start making a mistake, you make a mistake, it's that much more important to you to make up for it the next play. Uh, we're, I think we're starting to really get into our roles. I've been moved back to three technique, and Adolphus has been moved to nose guard, and he's really accepted that role, and he's playing extremely well at it. Um, so I think we have the depth at D-line, and I think we're really ready to, to show people that we're the best D-line in the country. Is Joey playing even better than you expected could have? No, Joey's playing the way I expected him to. When you, when you look at Joey, you realize that he doesn't really have a weakness because he's even keel, so he's not going to get too worked up. Uh, he's a smart kid. He's a strong kid. He's fast. He's really good with technique. I mean, he's he's kind of the whole package. It's what you what you expect. So, 
Um, I thought people would be trying to do more to stop him, which is surprising that they haven't. But um, it's it's just kind of hard to game plan against him when you have three other guys that uh, kind of need similar attention. Mark, they've only taste. given up five sacks this year. Only lost 23 yards on those plays. Mm -hmm. What is it that they're doing to be so effective from that standpoint? They do a really good, uh, really good job protecting their quarterback. They do a lot of play action, a lot of max protect. There's seven guys protecting the quarterback, so he he's got a while to sit back there. Um, so even when you blitz six guys, he's you got an extra person to to uh, help you block. So, I mean, they have a great game plan. Their O line is very good. Their running backs are very good. So they're a solid team. Um, it's important to not only beat one guy, but beat two guys if you want to get to the quarterback, uh, which I think we're capable of. Mike, when did you start thinking about Michigan State, and when did you start your prep for, for this week? Uh, Sunday. Um, we celebrated the victory over Illinois, and then uh, we watched the film, and then we pushed that game away and moved on to Michigan State. What was it like, though, like even late in the game against Illinois? Was it almost was there a sense of, release, uh, of, of relief that you guys got through you know, the last few weeks here unscathed to, to set up this big game with Michigan State? Uh, yeah, I mean, I really wasn't looking forward to like the Michigan State game. I was just kind of taking one game at a time. Um, but once it became time for Michigan State, it's it's exciting to be a part of this week. How long does Urban normally let you guys celebrate a win? Uh, 24 hours. And how long did he give you to celebrate the Illinois win? A little less than 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, why was that switch made with you and Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't talk to Coach Johnson about it too much. We kind of just do what they tell us and then try to make the most out of it. But um, I think it was a little bit of production, just to get a little bit more production. And uh, I think I was more comfortable at three technique than nose guard. Um, but I can't tell you for certain. Uh, but yeah, it's worked out pretty well the last couple games. After getting featured last week on the Big Ten Journey, are your roommates starting to get more attention on Twitter? A little bit. Uh, they love it. They love the Twitter attention. Um, I don't know. I try not to get too much into the Bennett Roomy stuff. It's all theirs. No Monopoly tonight? Hmm? No Monopoly tonight? Nah, I got tutoring. <laughs> hmm? The fro? Very slim. Very <laughs> slim. That was, uh, that was an experiment. <laughs> Did it not go well? Nah, it was, you know. That's a, that's a middle school thing. I'm done with that. Like, what do you remember... Two years ago when you guys went up there, how big was that Was that win and, and was there anything about playing in East Lansing that stood out to you? Two years ago, I think that was the deciding factor of our season was that big win over uh, Michigan State. I think if we had lost that game, it might have lost a lot of our confidence. Uh, but winning that game in the way we won it by shutting down their run, and they'd been a very good uh, running team. Um, it showed that we had the guys and we, we could come together. Uh, and I think that's similar to this year. I think it's very important that we stop their run and win by stopping their run because we have um, the scheme and the personnel on the back end to stop the pass as well. Are you guys still doing that pregame toast? Mm-hmm. The, the one that started? That started at Michigan State, yeah. Okay. That's, and he gives a little speech before it every time uh, that explains that that really changed our season around and changed the program around. Mike, you guys have played a, a lot of prolific offenses. How is Michigan State different schematically in terms of personnel, whatever, than those other offenses? I just think they're they're a little bit grittier. They they kind of just look at you and say, stop our run, and then uh, they make you do it. And um, if you can't stop the run, then they just kind of have a field day on you with throwing the ball and running it when they, when they feel like it. So I think this is one of those teams, it's like Wisconsin. If you shut down the run and make them throw the ball, it's a much easier game than having to figure out what they're doing the whole game. 